Yo 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 what's up guys and welcome to another video in the lost land. In today's video I will be showcasing every armor that is in the game besides a couple minor ones I don't have any access to armors can be found in the crafting section right below tools and some other options but most are there, many different armors are in the game with all different abilities and designs. So what are we waiting for let's get started. The first armor on the list is the ice armor, yet being the Weakest armor it has a key ability that allows you to swim in even the coldest of waters. Water in the ice region and possibly some other parts of the map damage you for it being so cold. If you wear this armor the water will no longer hurt you which is a plus, here is what the design looks like on a player and just dropped. If you check the map the ice area is where this armor can be useful to players but be careful because it's very weak, the next armors on the list all don't have any. Abilities, from Turkios to Rodonite the only differences between these armors is the health and color. If you ask me it would be better to give these armors some good abilities to help starter players survive from pro players trying to kill everything in their path, each armor just has a health boost and different color patterns. As you can see the health difference is the only major difference between these armors. All are cool but they are just starter armors and it would be better to give them a boost to help beginning players. By the way the Spinel giveaway ends in a week of now so check out that video if you wanna enter the giveaway. Here is what the strongest of those beginner armors look like on a player. A pinkish color seems nice and it resembles Rodonite. The next armor up is the Meteorite armor. This armor has a key skill that allows players to not take any damage from the Meteor Storm. The Meteor Storm is a disaster that you can find in my showcasing disasters video or just finding it in game when it naturally happens. To get this armor you just need to mine the meteor storm ores that are thrown at you and eventually you will have enough. The next armor up will be the green quartz armor. This armor also has a cool key skill that heals players faster than they would regularly. This armor is one of the best beginner armors because it provides an advantage similar to pixies meaning that it's worth quite a bit. Here is what. The armor looks like on the player, it has a green heart effect resembling its healing status effects on the player wearing it. The next armor is the sapphire armor, this armor gives players a slight swim speed increase meaning if you ever are swimming longer distances this armor can help you get to your destination quicker, personally I really like this dark blue color of sapphire and if it was a little stronger it could have been my favorite, you get 800 horsepower with this armor and it's equal and or on par with the green quartz armor. The next couple armors don't have any abilities and they are the Tanzanite armor and Appetite armor. These two armors are basically just an armor that resembles you are about halfway through the game. The armors are dark purple and blue and they both cost 10 of their respected ore. The Tanzanite armor has a cool little effect on it making me like it better than Appetite. Overall they are both average armors that mean you are halfway through the game. Next armor on the list is the Shell armor. This armor can be acquired at the end of the waterfall cave and gives players the key skill of longer oxygen duration while underwater. If you drown a lot while playing this armor will help you gain some extra time before absolute death awaits you. Now onto the ruby armor. This armor's key skill is that it provides light around the player, basically making you look like a glow stick if you struggle to see in caves and dark spots in the game this armor can help you get that extra vision you need to not fall and die. The armor is just a bright red armor with 1100 health points and can be found in the volcano. Next up we have the topaz armor. This armor doesn't have any key skills it's just good because of the health it provides the player. Nothing specifically special about it just the health points you get by wearing it is above average. Next up we have the titanium armor. This armor's key skill is very interesting, providing you the ability to do extra damage to anything you hit. This armor is actually very useful and I consider this the above average armor for this game, if you are still grinding. The game you don't really need to move up in armors until you get another stronger armor because of the damage boost this one gives you. The design of this armor is also very unique and for players who just started this would be the way to go, the next armor would be the jade armor. This armor also doesn't have any key abilities so I would mainly dodge this armor unless you really dig the design of it. The design is a dark green color very similar to emerald. Personally there are better options and at the moment this armor is a filler armor to the rest. Now we move on to the cooler armors. The obsidian armor is an armor that you get from the obsidian boss disaster. To find this disaster you can just wait in game or watch my video on every disaster. Personally this armor is the weakest of the rest of the disaster armors but would be very useful for newer players. Now we move on to my 
Favorite armor. The fire opal armor comes from the volcano disaster which you can also see in my disaster video. This armor protects you from lava and fire all around the map making it extremely useful as you will encounter quite a bit of lava as you rank up in the game. This being my favorite armor I am biased but personally the rest of the options are also extremely useful. The next armor is the hiddenite armor. This armor's key skill lets you progress further in the game letting you. Open the hiddenite door. Without this armor you can't progress any further in the game unless people just give you stuff. So this armor is extremely useful but I wouldn't necessarily say it's any good for anything else in the game such as PvP or grinding. Now the olivine armor is a good grinding armor. Similar to fire opal this armor protects you from green plasma which is an obstacle you will find in caves later in the game. Without this armor you won't be capable of getting to the other armors unless you once again just get it from someone. Here is what the armor looks like in the player very similar to Jade. But it's also stronger with a better skill making it better. Now onto the serpentite armor. This armor doesn't have a key skill but its design texture and effects that come off of the armor are all very appealing and cool. The health points of the armor also isn't bad so besides no abilities this armor can be useful for PvP but you shouldn't really do it lol. Next up we have sodalite armor. This armor being a special armor that you have to purchase to be able to craft it in the armor. Section this armor is considered to be the second strongest in the game besides Spinel. You need Turkios Appetite and Sapphire to craft it and it has 1900 health points for the player making it very strong. The armor can be found in the exclusive section of the shop and it costs 60 stars. So you guys if you are enjoying this video so far make sure to like and subscribe I really appreciate every bit of help you guys give me. Here is the design of the armor. It has a blue circle surrounding it with a hard shell blue color pattern. Now we move on to the strongest armor in the game. This armor is called Spinel. With no special ability besides being super strong this armor is the ultimate PvP armor solely based on how much health points it has. I am giving away 1000 Spinel for my 100 subscriber special and if you wanna enter in that check out my video called 1000 Spinel Giveaway Part 1. This armor has a dark. Red design with a good match with the cosmetic and character I am wearing. Now guys we move on to the 3 limited edition armors players could get while playing the game. First we will start with the weakest one which is the Valentine's armor. This armor just released on Wednesday 2024 on Valentine's Day and players can still get it for a limited time. Its special ability lets players gain pixie power back over time just as the Queen Pixie does. This is a pretty cool armor that you shouldn't miss out on. Next up is the Halloween armor. This armor has a pumpkin effect that comes off of it with a little bit of more health points than the Valentine's armor. Overall this is a cool armor that I am glad to have. Now onto the snow armor this was a Christmas event armor that you can get with the VIP game pass which is in the shop in the village. The armor has 700 health points and doesn't have a special key ability just stronger than. Valentine's armor. Now guys we are gonna move on to the last two armors of the game. I will need some help of a fellow friend of mine to show off the armor so let's go. Okay guys, first up I would like to show you all the diamond armor. You can get this armor through the diamond set in the player menu shop. This armor has 750 health points and is a little stronger than the event armors in the lost land. Overall this armor is very old and could use a redesign or something else with it. Now here is the coolest armor in the game. This armor is called the Rainbow Armor and you need to pay 500 Robux to get it. Many say it's pay to win but with its 500 health points it really makes it not as strong as it seems to be. The armor is the best starter armor in the game as its key ability is that it gets every key ability. Thank you all for watching and make sure to like and subscribe.